Welcome back, dear viewers, and our guest for this evening is Sheikh Mohammed Naqawi, international da'wah trainer. Sheikh Mohammed, assalamu alaikum, and good evening to you, and it's truly really a pleasure to have you with us on Hal Kuwait. Wa alaikum assalam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brother Mohammed, and it's a pleasure to be with you and with our dear viewers as well. It's always a pleasure, Sheikh Mohammed. So, when is the Islamic New Year? Everyone knows that uh, our religion, Islam, uh, and also the Islamic calendar and the Islamic New Year, and what is the story behind it? How it, uh, it was created. Great. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah. We seek His help, we seek His forgiveness, and we send salutation to Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, and all those who follow his footsteps till the day of judgment. Now, this is a very important question that you said when is the Islamic calendar, what is the Islamic calendar, and what is the story behind it? We'll take a few minutes to give a brief to the audience here, to you know, our dear viewers, so they will understand entirely what is Islamic uh, you know, year. Uh, let's understand, first of all, that before in Arabian Peninsula, even before Prophet Muhammad, before the prophecy, before Islam, th there is no concept of the date itself. Exactly. You know, there is no birth certificate, there is no death certificate, there is no uh, letters on the dates as we are right now doing it in, in around the world, in this country and everywhere. Mainly they used to name a certain year, if there is a certain incident happen, they will just name it after that incident. For example, we know Abraha, the king of uh, Yemen, he came with the many elephants to come to destroy Kaaba, and this is before Islam. Exactly. So when he came, and it's a longer story, so Allah Almighty sent these small birds, and each bird is having a small stone in their mouth and in Al their... Ababil. Uh, Ababil, Ababil, exactly. And then they came, and by Allah's uh, will and Allah's majesty, they, these small birds completely Subhanallah. destroyed the enemy. Because it was a big incident, the army is coming to, you know, destroy the sacred ha house of Allah, Kaaba. Uh, so that year, they call it Amal Fil, the year of elephant. On the same year, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was born. So there is no date, but it is just the name. And people used to like Amal Maja'a, the year of starvation, because people used to have the dryness and no food. So these are the names people used to use. Now, coming back to the you know, story, you know, because as I said, there is no specific number, then where, where the number came, starts from. So now, when Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him received the first revelation from uh, Angel Gabriel in the cave, in the Ghar Hira, in the Hira uh, cave. Uh, from that time started the Hijri year? No. Uh, when he, all the way, he spent 13 years in, in Mecca and then another 10 years in Medina, until his death, there was no Islamic date written. So then what happened? With the second Khalifa, the caliph, the second ruler of Islam, a person, uh, another companion who was uh, Amir, a, a leader in Basra, in Iraq, his name is Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. He came, a companion, this companion, and met the second Khalifa. He says, Ya Khalifa, we are receiving letters, and in these letters, you're giving us either commands and do this and do that. Only what we have is the month name. The, the, before the number, the month used to be known, the Islamic or the lunar month that we are using, Ramadan, Sha'ban, Rajab, and we will come to that. So it's a, he says, we have these letters, and it says on it Sha'ban. Like after a few months, we get confused, like which Sha'ban it is. It is this year, or the previous year, or what exactly you, know, you, you exactly. want us to do. Then the second Khalifa said, okay, fine, fair enough, let's you know, gather the big Sahaba, the big companion, and let's discuss this issue. Exactly. So they came with this idea, okay, now we have to put a number on the Islamic year. How we start the Islamic year? Some of the companions says, let's do it at the time when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was born. So. Some of other companions says, no, let's put the date when he was, you know, when he died. Some other companion says, no, let's do it when he migrated from Mecca to Medina, because this was the year, or this was the time when Islam started growing. A prophet reached to Medina and he established Islamic country, and there was a supporter. So, majority of the companion, if not all of them, they agreed that, okay, from the migration, we will start that, okay. The first migration was the first year of Hijrah. So, the number one was added you know, as the first year, then they counted like, okay, he lived in Medina 10 years, after the Medina, the first Khalifa ruled for, you know, two years. So they counted, okay, so now we have to put a specific date and then going with the months. The months, uh, as I told you, it was known to the Arabs. Uh, long story short, which month 
Prophet peace be upon him migrated on the third month, which is Rabi'i al-Awwal. Okay. Rabi'i al-Awwal, but as we know Islamically, the first month is what? Muharram. You know, exactly. Islamic. Then why these differences? Uh, the second Khalifa says, see, I want to start the first month as number one to be Muharram. What's, what's the reason? He says, because before Muharram, it is the international season. Exactly. Hajj, right? Hajj, yeah. So it is known worldwide, even that Arab, before Islam, people used to go to do their own pagan worship, you know, for, for Hajj. Not for the sake of Allah, but they, they have this ritual to do Hajj. Like it's the conclusion of the Islamic calendar. Yes, exactly. exactly. So this was the main idea. So I want to keep this entire uh, international event of Hajj. And immediately after that, the first month will be the month of Muharram. Exactly. So the first Muharram was also dedicated or it was uh, taken as a decision to be the first month by the second Khalifa. And the consensus of the, all the Sahaba, the companion, that okay, the first year will be the year when the Prophet, peace be upon him, migrated from Mecca to Medina. Exactly. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad, uh, what else you can share with us about the uh, Islamic calendar? Islamic calendar. Now let's come to the, as you said, uh, Islamic calendar. So let's talk and let the viewers as well know about the names of these, uh, you know, Islamic calendar. Please. First of all, Allah Almighty told us in the Quran in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 32. Uh, he says, uh, Which means, of course, till the end of the ayah, which means that the numbers of the month in the sight of Allah or in the book of Allah, they are 12 months. Now, these 12 months, like the other 12 months that we have, January, February, March, April, but these are the Islamic uh, uh, calendar or the Islamic months that it was known even before Islam. So, for example, the first month is Muharram. The second month is uh, Safar. The third month is Rabi' al-Awwal, when the Prophet migrated, Rabi' al-Awwal. Then you have Rabi' al-Thani. Then you have Jamad al-Awwal, Jamad al-Thani. Then you have Rajab. Then you have Sha'ban. Then you have Ramadan. Then you have Shawwal. Then Dhul Qa'dah, Dhul Hijjah. Now don't ask me to translate these names because it will take another half an exactly, hour. Exactly, so these are yes. the 12 months that exactly. you know we know and so we yes, follow. And the good thing about, just a quickly, good thing about these months, that these months are dependent on the moon. moon yeah. So it's by Allah. See, even if you look deeper and even the viewers, Muslims and Muslims, if you look deeper into Islam, it is all signed, given us by Allah Almighty. Exactly. Ramadan, your salah is attached with the sun. Right, exactly. you, uh, the month ending and beginning, it's uh, linked the with the moon. Exactly, that's so, why we see the change. Ramadan comes all over the year. Exactly, through sometimes through thirty winter, years. Sometimes yes, spring. Sometimes exactly. Spring. You know, I remember. Uh, I think I was, I don't know, maybe ten years old or something. The Ramadan was in in, uh, in November. Can you imagine? November, it was cold, you know, November. but Ramadan was in November. Exactly. And now, mashallah, Ramadan is in the hottest month, and inshallah, it's coming back. So, and the good thing about it, the Ramadan is only. 29 or 30 days. We don't have the concept of 31 or 30 days, 31. It is only 29 or 30 days. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, Sheikh Muhammad, about the start of the new year, the new Hijri year, or mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the first uh, month in the Islamic calendar, how to, uh, like your advice for new beginnings, and how can we plan and set goals for the uh, new uh, Islamic year? Thank you very much for your question. And this is very important for myself, for yourself, and our dear viewers. Now, first of all, let's understand something that we don't have the concept of celebration of the new year, you know, as uh, this, this habit actually came from the, you know, some other countries and some other culture. Islamically, there is no celebration and bringing cake and candles and blowing and all these things. It's just a new year. We ask Allah Almighty to make it a good year, a, a, a successful year, the year that we get more closer to Allah Almighty. So this is the concept that, you know, there is no specific event or a specific ibadah, act of worship that you have to do. Yes, just try to get closer to Allah Almighty in any action that you want. So this is the first Thing. Now, what the goals that we have to set up? Uh, very important that I would like to remind myself and you that myself, yourself, Brother Muhammad, and other people, when it comes to the dunya, the world, we set up the goals, right? I want to finish my studies, I want to get into engineering, law, this and that, and after I finish the four years of my you know, bachelor's, I will maybe try to get my master's, and then you will struggle for it, and after you get the master's or the bachelor's, you might go and search for the job and then you try exactly. your best to be good in your job. So, you know, they will, instead of the three months of probation being a temporary employee, then they will shift you to be the, exactly. you know, a permanent employee. You try your best, right? Whatever exactly. it is, whatever it is. Then why we don't do the same thing when it comes to Allah Almighty? 
Definitely. Why it's, it's not the same when it comes to the deen, your religion, your manners, your akhlaq with Allah Almighty. Yes, we are not saying that don't do, don't struggle in the dunya. Okay, it's okay. It's, we are living in it. So you have to struggle for it. Either it's your work, either it's a business, either you study. No problem. May Allah bless you. But similarly or simultaneously, we have to balance. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً As Allah says, exactly. we made you a, a balanced nation. So you cannot have the dunya that much and the, 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 the deen is here, the religion is here. It has to be balanced, you know, if not, the deen has to be more than that, but at least exactly. balanced. So yes, set up, setting up the goals in order to get closer to Allah Almighty, have pen, paper, put notes, whatsoever that you want to do, and, and whatever that you can do to get closer to Allah, do it. Exactly. This is, uh, of course, Sheikh Muhammad, something uh, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we will talk more about the things we can do to help uh, others when, be, when we will be right back. So, dear viewers, we will take a break and then we'll be right back with Sheikh Muhammad to talk more about Sadaqah. Welcome back, dear viewers, and we're still with our guest for this evening, Sheikh Mohammed Al Naqawi, International Da'wah Trainer. Welcome back, uh, Sheikh Mohammed. And as you mentioned, uh, establishing the uh, good Muslim uh, have to establish himself and his uh, uh, connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and making du'a and making also uh, a plan to uh, worship uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and making good deeds. So now, about the habits we have to establish in ourselves towards others and one of the most uh, well-known habits and praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, sadaqa. So what can you tell us about it? Uh, very good question, you know, regarding the sadaqa. And before getting into the, the main topic, like what we, how we can establish and what we can do things that we can establish in order to attain the sadaqa, Prophet peace be upon him said something yes, yes. wonderful. And this religion, this deen is, is unique from exactly. this hadith. Exactly. He says, if you do something good, and you teach other people to do something good, you will get the same. So for example, I did something good today, okay? And I, t I told you, Brother Muhammad, I did something or I start doing a new habit that whenever I leave home, for example, I see a poor guy or I see any cleaner or something like that, I give him sadaqah or I give him money or maybe I'll go and buy a sandwich and a, and a, and a drink and I give him. And I, I really feel good. So you got this from me. You got the idea from me, right? You say, okay, let me do it, you know. So you start doing it. And you start feeling good about it. You know, every time you're just leaving the house, the first thing you do before you reach to the work, you just give a, a sandwich or a, or a Coke or, a, or a, you know, a, some, some money to a poor person. And you start feeling good. Then you t say to your brother, for example, or you in the diwaniya, you say, you know, I'm start doing this. Now imagine, because of you, I didn't, I didn't say it to anyone except you. And exactly. you maybe on the KTV2, for example, said this, exactly. shared it. Maybe a hundred people start doing it. It got spread. It spread. All these hundreds and two hundreds and thousand people, those who start doing it, all their reward will come to me. Exactly. Can you imagine? Exactly. Just because wow. of simple... Of course, I didn't tell you this to show off, for example. Exactly. The first Definitely. Because the niya should be clean and pure for Allah Almighty. To raise intention. awareness also. Exactly. So this is what I mean. This is the first thing. That, you know, whatever you want to do, do it for the sake of Allah. Exactly. And try to do something good, as I told you. You know, uh, I saw this old lady. May Allah, may Allah protect her. I don't know who she. I was coming out from the supermarket, Jam'iyya. And I saw this old lady having her, you know, bags in her hand and she's walking and she saw that small little cat at the door. You know, normally at the door, inside the door it's cold, outside the door it's hot. So the cat is just sitting next to the door because of the weather was hot. So I can see this old lady saying, Yahle ilha, yani, so, so cute That's cat, so cute, yeah. or this and that. And she kept her bags, she went all the way inside and she came outside after maybe two, three minutes with a can of tuna. And she opened the can of tuna and she kept it and she left. I said, subhanAllah, see, something simple. Might you know? be a reason to make her go immediately to, to Jannah, Jannah, to the exactly, paradise. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. these are the simple things, you know, we have to do on a daily basis. I'm not saying that only stick to your ibadah, five daily prayers on a day or once uh, a month in, in Ramadan, once a month in Ramadan, you just fast and things like that. These are the obligatory things, me yeah. and you, we have to do. It's it. the wajib. It's a wajib. It's obligatory upon us. Exactly. But something that you have to set the goals that no. Last year, I didn't do enough. Last year, I didn't pray enough. Last year, I was lazy and slacking in my salah and this and that, whatever it could be. This year, no, I have to be on time. This year, I will do extra sadaqa, extra action. Wallahi, some people have the goal that, okay, I will at least make two to three people smile. So they will go and talk to them nicely. They will tell them jokes and whatsoever. In their intention is what? 
I'm making this person smile for the sake of Allah or laugh for the sake of Allah. Alhamdulillah, I did my job. So there are different people with a different, you know, mashallah, any yani mindset. Uh, one of the reason, uh, one of the brothers did something unique in Ramadan, for example. He says, I did sadaqah in a, in a different way. Well, how's that? He says, I went to the, you know, the, the area where the expats are, you know, not the local people, people from, you know, outside. Then I go to the bakala, the small gro grocery shop, and I enter inside and I say, can I have the small booklet that you put the people's name and what they, what they borrow from you? So he says, yes, yes. So I said, can I see the, 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 uh, the, uh, the note, uh, the book? He says, okay, so-and-so. I said, who's so-and-so? Well, she's an old lady, she's an orphan, having four kids, and she, she has to pay us 20 dinar. So, okay, I'll pay for her. Take her, yes, take her name out. Who's this person? He is an old guy and having a family, this and that. How much? 50 KD, I'll pay. Remove the name. So, subhanAllah, at the end, he, he removed all it's, the people's name. It's in secret. That, like, yeah, Imagine, no one knows. Yeah. And this is something unique. Like, who thought about it? But this man, Allah gave him that uh, tawfiq, that blessings Same that thing. he think out of the box, as we say. He thought out of the box, and then, alhamdulillah, he did something good. Alhamdulillah. So, Sheikh Muhammad, how important uh, and why it's important to know our strength, strength and weakness points and how we develop the better version of us? How can we know it and how can we improve our strengths and, uh, let's say, erase our weakness? Mm -hmm. As I said even earlier, that we, when it comes to the dunya, when it comes to the, our worldly matter, materialistic matter, when it comes to the rays at work, when it comes to the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the, the uh, uh, promotion. promotion at work, we try our best, right? We have to be exactly. on time at work, we have to do all our tasks and everything. Similarly, look from the same perspective with the Akhirah, exactly. with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the ajr, because of the reward from Allah is untangible, you cannot touch it, it does not mean that you have to be lazy about it, right? We know that all these things will be on the day of judgment in the scale, and the more scale is getting heavier. Why? Because you do the good deeds. So as I told you, now, a person might think and say, okay, I have this weakness that I cannot get up for fajr, for example. Fajr is 3.30, 3 for example, 4 o'clock. It is difficult for me to you know, get up. We ask this person this simple question. What if you have next upcoming days or next month flight at 6 o'clock in the morning? What you will do? Definitely exactly. you will get up at 3 o'clock. Maybe uh, one, before. one a.m. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, before you will get up at 2 o'clock. Depends on the country sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. And then you will, you know, uh, take a shower, wear your clothes and go all the way and be in the airport at six, uh, 4 o'clock or maybe before that. Why? Because 6 o'clock, you know, you will take off. So, so when you think and compare things like that, okay, then the dunya is more beloved to you, more closer to you than praying two rakah. Exactly. Just two, two units, you know, you get up, uh, make ablution, wudu. And just pray to, if you don't want to go to the masjid, just pray to rakah and go back exactly. to sleep. So these are the things and whatever, you know, a person might say that, okay, when it comes to me buying, I have no problem buying a, a coffee from a branded coffee brand shop for two or three dinar. But when it comes to giving a poor person, I will think twice or twice, yeah. you know, giving one KD, oh, that's too much. You just bought a three KD, exactly, uh, you know, yeah. coffee, and yeah. you think uh, half a dinar or one dinar. So you have to compare these exactly. things. That you have to balance your uh, balance. Uh, I'm not saying pay yeah, three KD, but at least you know, don't think twice when you give for the sake of Allah, and you don't even think once when you go and buy your uh, favorite uh, coffee, for example, or, or clothes. Exactly, Sheikh Muhammad, one of the old Islamic scholars, uh, I've heard the story that uh, a person came to him and wanted his advice because he just had a child. And he told him, uh, you're too late because he's born now. So, yeah, so uh, it is about raising also our children. Yeah. And uh, rec the recommendation you would like to share with us about raising our kids and start what to start putting on their minds mm. when it comes to uh, good habits and uh, the good Islamic behavior towards others. Wallahi, I thank you, Brother Muhammad, for this question. And I say, if it was only this question for today's interview, I think this question was enough because we might keep talking and talking exactly. about very sensitive topic. It is, you know, raising the kids, especially the time and the era that we are living in. It is, it is challenging, challenging, big responsibility on me, on you, on our brother and sister, those dear viewers, uh, those who have children. It is a big responsibility. Uh, really, uh, if, if it was only this question, we might take, and this is what I do as an uh, international da'wah uh, trainer, this is what I, you know, talk about to the parents. 
I'll give you an example. Now we are living in a time which is a big challenge. Leave, alhamdulillah, the Muslim countries, even though you have a lot of big challenges in the Muslim countries or the Arab countries or the Gulf countries, the moment you go outside and see the other countries, you know, without mentioning their name, it's a big chaos. Imagine at the early age, at the age of uh, nursery, grade one, grade two, they are telling them things which we get shocked, like, you know, what is this? Like, you know, whatever things are, you know, if, if we talk in detail, uh, me and you will be in trouble because imagine uh, they, these people, unfortunately, they made the laws and, and, and regulations that we cannot even say a word, you know, to them. Leave everything aside. Now let's come back to the children. Exactly. As a parent, as a father, mother, a brother, elder brother, you have to see what they are watching what they are playing. Don't say they are watching cartoons. No, exactly. there are hidden messages in the cartoons that you will get shocked. Exactly. Don't say they are just playing uh, on their iPads. No. Keep checking. Sometimes, the algorithm, yeah. because the iPad is connected with the internet, means you know people are able to see. And once we download anything and we click on the agree, exactly. you're agreeing them to open the camera, you're agreeing them to getting exactly. into your you know gallery and everything. There might be abusive pop-ups or advertisements. Yes, and it yeah, only exactly. happens when the child is having that thing exactly. and they are able to see that, okay, if it's a child, exactly. then the abusive or unethical ad will pop unfortunately. up. Unfortunately. So unfortunately, you have to be, be very careful either from the outside, either from the inside, which is the TV or television or the uh, cartoons, so-called cartoons, games that they are playing. I'm not saying stop everything, but you have to be very careful. From the other side, as I say, we, we, Allah made us a balanced nation. So I cannot just give him the iPad and open the TV and leave him and then do my work for hours and hours. No. From the other side, I just tell him simple things on daily basis, 10 minutes, read uh, or tell him a story of a Prophet, one prophet. Uh, kids like, you know, these things. Oh, Solomon, Prophet Solomon used to fly and he used Sorry. to talk to the animals. He used to talk to the birds. Exactly. They like these stories, even the other stories. So not only focusing on the dunya and playing and exactly. everything, but even give them the ethics. Tell them the stories of the prophet, how he used to deal with the elderly people, exactly. how he used to deal with the kids, how he used to deal with the spouses and the companion, uh, how generous he was, how you know, powerful and strength he used to have. You know, so tell them from all the experts, from the karam, from the generosity, from the power, how mashallah, you know, shuja, uh, brave he was, uh, from the part that how lenient he was with, with, you know, someone if he's making a mistake, you know, how lenient he was. So we give these examples from the stories of the prophets, from the story of the seerah, the biography of our prophet. Uh, tell them different stories, but keep, keep it balanced because Definitely. it's a big responsibility on us. And this, as I told you, this question is, is not even given maybe 10% of its right because of the time, I believe. But inshallah, maybe for the next time, we dedicate this, you know, to, uh, you know, focusing on the children, upbringing the children, and what is our duty and what is their duty. MashaAllah, Sheikh Mohammed, from the Islamic uh, New Year, and uh, until we reached uh, the good habits we have to teach our children, and what came between it, it was really, MashaAllah, a great and inspiring uh, interview with you. But we, before we end this interview, we'd like to have uh, last word or advice to our dear viewers, Sheikh Mohammed. Thank you very much. And the last uh, word I would like to share, first of all, to myself before my brothers and sisters, that... Uh, one of the ulama, you know, one of the scholars said that, you know, the ice cube, you have an ice cube in this cup, for example, right? Exactly. So, so let's show the viewers that this wonderful cup, you know, Halakwait. Halakwait. And you have <laughs> a ice on it, right? You have an ice. Then this ice is melting drop by drop, right? So if I ask you, Brother Muhammad, how long it will take for this ice cube to melt? So you give me maybe, according to your, you know, calculation, you will say it will take next 15 to 20 minutes exactly. until it's gone completely and it become a water similarly our life on daily basis is you know drop and drop by drop is, exactly. is getting the only difference between the ice cube and our our life is that the ice cube you can do your own calculation you can make your own math and you will say 10 15 minutes 20 minutes according to the room temperature and whatsoever but our life you know can be just at any time return back to allah almighty our ruh our soul so this is the focus that we have to focus. The year of Hijrah is gone. One year of, of Hijri year is gone. What we have done, we have to go and think about it. 
let's get try to get closer to Allah Almighty in upcoming days and upcoming year. And as I said, keep in your mind that we, me and you and all of us at the end will meet Allah Almighty. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Jazakallah uh, khair, Sheikh yes, Muhammad, for being this evening with us on Halakwait. And we wish you a uh, great and uh, well achieved towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islamic year, inshallah, inshallah. And to all our dear uh, brothers and sisters who are watching us this evening. Thank inshallah. you so much. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. The viewers we just had with us, Sheikh Muhammad al-Naqawi, international da'wah trainer.